Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. We pulled back the tarp here that was covering this bed and just left it for that because we're gonna do a, a test here. I wanna see how good tillage radish is gonna to do to till, kind of till this up for me. So as you guys know, I spent a lot of time uh, with this whole section here. I've got from here to there, I got four separate beds that are 20 feet long and this is about 25 feet wide total, roughly and uh, it took a long time. So I had to go through, I had manual equipment. That thing, that thing right there, that you just stick in the ground and you twist it. And I pulled up a whole bunch of rock, uh, probably four wheelbarrows full of rock and some of them were this size. Okay, that's some big rocks. So um, we, you know, we spent a lot of effort trying to do this, but we've got heavy clay soil and a lot of rock in it so then I was amending it so I put a whole bunch of compost on top we made the rows put compost and we let this sit for a little while under a tarp to kill off any weeds because we do have some really persistent weeds that come through it's been sitting under a tarp for maybe a month and a half to two months under our hundred plus degree weather so now it's time to get the soil back into good condition because we kind of pretty much killed all the microbes by leaving the tarp on but I was trying to stop the the weeds. So what I'm going to be doing the first round is be, going to be planting some tillage radish. So this is a test. So I've got, I'm going to be putting tillage radish here and then over here we tried buckwheat and uh, sun hemp and those two combined to see how they do with amending the soil and then because uh, they've got pretty good root systems that should be able to kind of pull things up and then here I've got uh, black-eyed peas. So they, basically southern peas uh, those are really good at amending soil as well. They bring in nitrogen to the soil. So we're trying a couple different things to be able to try to grow the soil, not grow the soil necessarily, but grow the soil microbes, see how these do. And I got this tool. So I got this on Amazon. If you guys want to check it out, I'll put a link below. But basically I'm just going to go through and make holes, get those seeds down in, enough to actually get moisture. Because if I just put them on top, uh, right in this compost this compost is kind of mulchy it's gonna be hard to get them to germinate so uh, basically I'm creating holes to get the seeds down in so you can see kind of how that works I made some holes and just go all the way down the row like that All the way, yeah, push it in though, all the way. Make sure they touch. There we go. Not to go hard. Just... Good. Good job. All right. So today is August 31st, and so this is what we're planting. It's tillage radish. Go ahead and uh, spread this out. Hey, do you want to help? Oh, that's what we do? All right, so now we got this seeded and many fell in the holes, some didn't. But I'm gonna take, I've got this tool that actually flattens out the, the soil and I think I'm gonna use that and that should be able to close those holes pretty well, so. Okay. 
Okay. Good. Now we just gotta water this in and we're good to go. Day four. All right, so today is September 4th and we've got sprouts all over. Now most of the sprouts came up where I put the holes in, but we do have a couple spots like right here where there's a whole bunch like, you know, a cluster. And same with over here at the end. So for some reason at the ends, it's more of a cluster. Um, but we, you can see they're separated though, almost perfectly for most of them that came up first. We do have a couple secondary coming up on the sides, but kind of laid it out like a grid so that worked perfectly those little holes so yeah i think we got pretty good germination here too and then coverage hopefully gonna do well now we've had a lot of rain here in the last two days and um so that might have helped with the germination but i'll keep you guys updated but i'll bring you guys back in a couple weeks once this starts to grow really well now when this sends its taproot because it, it's tillage radish it'll send its taproot deep and once it gets bigger uh, that should break up that clay soil underneath and add some organic matter under there. So hopefully, hopefully it does its job and does that. So, all right, bring you guys back soon. Four to six weeks later. Well, I think it's time to chop and drop this radish. So the tillage radish, daikon radish here. Let's see if I can find it. I saw there was a flower forming. There we go. I'm starting to get flowers, guys, so that means this will turn to seed pretty soon, which I do not want. Now, this is a little early, I think, for it too, but we had, we did get a hot spell come in. It started to cool down, and then it shot back up, and I think that tricked it into thinking, okay, now I knew I've got to form seed because they, it, it thought that the winter came, and then the summer is now coming again, or spring. And we're in the 80s today, uh, upper 80s, actually, So, and we were yesterday and the day before. Um, so it is time it is time and i've already got some pretty hefty roots and i'm gonna pull this one up here and just see how this goes but i think i'm gonna get a couple of these and bring them inside and eat them because daikon tastes good okay well that one's not as long as i wanted but hey if all of them are like that, that's some good cavities under there that rot down. So I'm gonna put this right there. I'm gonna pick a couple of them, especially the bigger ones, maybe a little deeper in. Now they're a little shorter. I'm gonna come in with my weed eater. I mean, I don't have the best tools to chop and drop. You know, the best thing probably would be a mower that has a rear ejection. That would be the easiest and I could set it super low, but I don't have that. So I think I'll just use the weed eater. It might spray some of the leaves everywhere. Well, I'm covered in radish guts, basically. Um, so that worked, but it was messy. And I was actually having it, the, the way that you usually weed eat is you want it to shoot out away from you. I was keeping it going towards me because I figured I would stop it and have it drop instead of shoot off because I wanted to keep as much of the green as possible here. So that way, you know, it does its thing. That's what I did a cover crop for. 
excuse the hood, it's sunny, so I keep that on to keep the sun off my neck. But that, you know, that's what a cover crop is for. It's to grow something and then that feeds the microbes after, you know, after that decomposes. So I have noticed that anything in the center didn't seem to form fat tap roots. So, so the, the root itself, the stuff that you eat, um, didn't form in the center yet, okay? Um, only on the edge, which is really weird. So if you come through here, I can find a, there's a lot of good vegetation here. And by the way, that weed eater kind of mulched it up for me a little bit, so that's good. Let's see if I can find. So we'll pull this root up. You can see, look at that. That's thin, right? Uh, one is I don't think that was getting as much sun. The other thing I think, uh, let's see. Here's another one. We'll pull this one up. Thin. Now this one's a little thicker. It's not right in the center. But the ones on the side don't have much depth. So I have a theory, which I'm going to pull this up and see how deep this one went. Yeah. So that one started, you can see, but it didn't quite get the fatness on the end. Let's come down here. I saw quite a few. I'm going to try to push all this back up into... the bed here so the edge here is not as fluffy because it doesn't it's not stacked up with compost this is all compost and the edge has no compost so compost is mostly night I think this is twofold compost is mostly nitrogen and if you give root veggies too much nitrogen they don't form their root they form vegetation which I was seeing so in the center there's a lot of vegetation growing but the roots were, were not very big. On the edge, they were growing their bigger roots. So, let's see, I just saw one. Here we go. Look at the size, the fatness of this root. If I can get this out. Now, it didn't get the depth because this isn't as fluffy. So that was twofold. So it could not get down deep because this is hard soil down there. Under this, this is the path. I walk on it, it's not as fluffy could not get down but on the in the center it could so not only was it getting too much nitrogen in the center from the compost but the other reason is this once it hit it stopped so it wasn't forming a longer tap root it was stopping and it knew okay so that's as far as i can go then it started growing the the width rather than the depth so i think that's what was in play and i think this is a little early technically but that's just because we had a uh, hot spell if we didn't have this hot spell and we didn't and i didn't start seeing some of these bolt then i would have left this another two weeks three weeks and we might have seen some thicker roots in the center uh, i think um, so that's my theory on it but still uh, what this did is still what i'm looking for now this is a brand new bed so i'm not going to get the really fluffy soft soil for this to penetrate and get deep, deep tap roots like you could if this was a well-established bed with 10 inches down of soft, you know, pliable soil. 10 inches down is hard clay still. I mean, it's working its way down with this compost on top. Um, you know, this no-till method over time is going to end up making that uh, a good soil for all this to grow in. But right now, being a new bed. This is the first crop in this bed. It's gonna take a while. Uh, that was a good one. Now I'm gonna go through, kick this in, and then we're gonna cover this with a tarp and let this sit for a couple weeks and let all this deteriorate and break down and feed the microbes underneath.
All right, there we go, it's covered. And I was like doing this, guys. Today is October 23rd. Two weeks later. All right, are you gonna help? Yeah, just the ship. All right. I'm gonna slide it. Good. I tried. Good job. Whoa, that was creepy. Yeah. Look at this, everyone. Do you see it? It's looking really good. Don't touch any of that. That's molded up. Yeah. So it does look like most of this has really decomposed. I mean, look at this. That's looking really good. That's really that good. Weird. So what we're going to end up doing, um, it is going to be raining the next couple days. Um, you can see it's a little dry here. You've got a line here of like the moisture from the rain um, and it stayed a little dry. It's still somewhat moist. It's uh, allowing some molds and stuff, but we're going to let this kind of stay open for a little bit. And then I'm going to come through. I'm going to add some nutrients to this. I will broad fork it's this. It's almost winter. You're cold? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a little chilly now. Um, probably 55 degrees. Not that bad, but... Um, I'm gonna add some nutrients here, uh, broad fork it, and then we'll put a little layer of compost on top. It should be good. So bring you guys back in a couple days while I'm ready to do that. Um, but this is looking really good. 